The discovery of something shiny in a tiny town in California changed everything. In January of 1848, a carpenter working for a mill owner saw a few flakes of gold in the American River in Coloma. That was located in what was the California Territory at the time. As you might expect, both the carpenter, James Marshall, and the mill owner, John Sutter, really tried to keep their discovery hush-hush, but that didn't quite work out. By the end of March, word had gotten out via local newspapers that gold was being found around Sutter's mill. Within weeks, thousands of men were making their way from San Francisco and surrounding towns to try to get rich quickly, and word was leaking out to many other places, too. But keep this in mind, of course. This was in the days before TV or radio or even telephones, and even the use of telegraph technology was kind of just in its infancy at the time. So newspapers were really the only way to truly get the word out other than just word of mouth. But by the end of the year, the word was officially spread and blown. Their cover was blown by President James K. Polk. He announced in a speech that there was, and this is a quote, an abundance of gold of such an extraordinary character as would scarcely command belief. And with that, the gold rush was on. One of the terms you'll often hear associated with the gold rush, and especially if you're a fan of American football, is the 49ers. This is used to describe those people who rushed to California, mostly in 1849, from all parts of the country, even from other countries. It had an enormous impact on these, this new American territory of California. And remember, the U.S. had officially acquired California after the Mexican War in a treaty that was signed just nine days after the initial discovery at Sutter's Mill, and completely unrelated, I might add. So at the start of 1848, looking at the effect this had on California in the short term, it's estimated that about 7,000 non-Native Americans lived in California. By the start of 1850, that number had grown to over 15,000, and by 1853, over 300,000 people had moved to California. With this rapid influx of people, mining towns or boom towns popped up close to where miners were working. These towns offered places to buy supplies and food. There were bars and brothels, and since the population grew so quickly and there was so much money at stake, potentially, lawlessness and crime were a constant problem. And But go back to those riches for a second. Um, the, most of those who did get rich or profit well from all of this were not really the miners. They were mainly the merchants and the businessmen that supplied the miners with materials. People who made and sold things like wheelbarrows or even pans like the 49ers using there, various mining equipment, they made fortunes during this time, as did the bankers who loaned money to mining operations to get their business go businesses going in the first place. But probably the most famous example of all of this was a German-born tailor who made sturdy, long-lasting pants that miners could wear day after day. His name, Levi Strauss, and chances are there, there may be a pair of jeans in your closet right now bearing his first name. The gold rush would not last. By the end of 1850, most of the easy-to-reach gold was gone, and with, within a few years more, relatively few mining outfits were still in operation. Those that stayed around did so with great effort and expense. But many people, of course, never left California, which had a pretty significant impact on the territory. Just two and a half years after becoming a U.S. territory, California was able to enter as the U.S.'s 31st state. Its admission was part of what you've also probably studied about, the Compromise of 1850, which was meant to keep a balance between slave and free states. And California, remember, would be admitted as a free state where slavery would not be allowed. <laughs> 